Hey everybody, welcome to where are we at today, guys? LA, LA Times. Times. LA Times. And I want to thank you all for joining us. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you guys, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. And just like I tell you, you know what I mean? Please tell your comadres, compadres, tell the, the homeboy at the meat market, say, hey, you sabes que? These vatos, man, shoot the wheel on there. Let them know that we're here and we're talking on different subjects that have to do with the raza. It has to do with you know just the average person that's out there on the streets. And uh, man, we're just trying to give you guys a positive, positive message uh, of what's going on in the world. Um, even though everything's dark right now with COVID and everything else um, happening on the Calles. But today I want to thank uh, some of my guests here today. I'll let you guys introduce yourself. Go ahead, Sonny. I'm Sonny from the Street St. Miles Show. I'm here to support LA Times. Gracias, gracias. Go All right. Cholo Trucker here. You catch me on YouTube on Cholo Trucker. For those who are into some boxing, go ahead and check out Cholo Boxing as well. Yeah, and I'm uh, Incredible Javier from the Incredible Javier Show, showing love to all, all of you gentlemen here. Much love. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Say thank you. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you, Cholo Trucker. And the incredible, amazing, phenomenal Javier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I want to thank you for joining us today, man. We feel blessed to have you here. And uh, man, I just, just my, my subject for today is going to be you. I want to talk about you. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and I want to know more about your story. I want to know more about your life. And I want to know, like, like, do you like beans or rice or both? Or, you know what I mean? Corn tortillas or flour? That's the question right there, dog, that we all want to know. Flour. All right, all right. Or, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you like the, um, nah, anyways. Okay. Let's carry on with this conversation. That's gonna be wait before we start. Like and subscribe, please. All right, I mean, I'm gonna ask you like where where'd you grow up at? I grew up in El Monte, California. Um, you know, streets of El Monte. Uh, my roots are pretty deep right there. Uh, my my on my mom's side, we go back to I don't even know how far. Like as, as far back, my great grandmother was born in El Monte, and her mother was born there. So it's like I I, I don't even know how far back we go. Uh, on my dad's side, you know, he he was from Mexico, uh, born in Mexico, but then he moved to El Monte and he joined the neighborhood. So my dad's from El Monte Flores. My grandma, she rode with them, but her her husband is from El Monte Flores. And then, you know, naturally I, I decided I'm going to be from Monte Flores too. So I joined the neighborhood. That's, that's generational right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was all that uh, I looked up to growing, growing up, like most people, uh, not I wouldn't even say most people because you know most of us we did look up to that that's what we looked up to we strive to to be that we we were like damn I, I want to get on that level I want to be like the older homies and shit so uh and stuff my bad so for me I I um you know I wanted that so badly because I seen it that's all I knew when people would tell me you should do good you you have a lot of potential uh you should go to college it just seemed difficult like I, I didn't know how to get there I didn't know what steps to take but I saw the steps to to you know, being involved in that gang in that gang life, I said that, that those are easier steps for me to take because that that's what I noticed. And you know, maybe I wasn't that bright growing up, but I followed the easier path. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't even think it's the easier path, right? But it is it, because it, some people say, yeah, we well, want to go down the path of uh, least resistance or whatever. Yeah, I think that was like the most resistance, the most you know what I mean, with the most uh, sacrifice. You know, that's that's what I feel. But yeah, it takes a special um, man. I want to say a warrior, that Aztec, you know, that Mayan blood in you. That, and I'm not trying to like to hype it up or nothing like that. I'm just saying that it, it, it. When you take that road, man, it's, it's a, it's a rough one, man. It's definitely a rough one. Yeah, I think because uh, we started, we started off young. I mean, so I started off real young, and uh, it was it was easier for me because that's all I knew, right? So when I stepped away from it, that's what really became difficult because I was uh, going into uncharted territory. So I really didn't know like, oh, what am I gonna do now? How, how do I do this uh, job interview? How do I speak to people? How do I dress? I remember the first time I dressed for a job interview, I dressed like I was going to a club. You know what I mean? Like, like, like a cholo club, you know what I mean? Like, like the, the hop back in the day, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, but I, I got the job luckily because the guy was cool. But afterwards I learned like you have to wear a suit, you have to wear a suit and tie and slacks and stuff like that. So I, I learned throughout the years, but at first it was just like, I don't know what to do. And some 
the main thing that I had going for myself is that I took a chance on myself every step of the way. I was like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, I can do that. And I just kept doing that. And, and luckily, it worked out for me. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Joe. You, you, you know, uh, well, first of all, man, excuse Joe over there with his Pepsi. But, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, you know what, man? I I um, I used to hang around in Monte. I used to live in Bowen Park. Um, yeah. back in like the late 90s and what was Bowen Park and Monte and La Puente right there there was a saying of the SGB where it stood for the San Gangster Valley and yeah. that it was man but see somebody like me man who never really had an actual hometown we just moved around all the time you know what I mean all the time yeah. constantly picking up and moving picking up and moving when, when, when you leave El Monte do you feel like you're out of your, you know, out of your place, out of your element? Because you're saying you're you're deep rooted in there, you know, not just you, but your family, everything. You go generations and stuff like that. For me, picking up and moving became normal. It became like, all right, cool, fine. I'm going to another school and everything like that. But I'm assuming with you, you had the same friends, went to the same uh, elementaries, junior high, high schools, everything like that. So when you like leave El Monte or when you go back to El Monte, either one, do you feel like, man, this is my comfort zone? And when you're out of there, do you feel like, man, I'm out of my comfort zone? Yeah, yeah, I'll touch on a few things you said there. So for me, as a kid, I did move around a lot, but I moved around a lot in Monte. So um, I really didn't start to uh, like stay in a certain same spot until I was about in fourth grade. Before that, we were everywhere, but always in El Monte. Because there really used to be a lot of uh, motels up and down Garvey. And a lot of the times, you know, we didn't have a place to uh, stay. So we'd stay in those motels. Boom, boom. And we'd just constantly be on the move. So about the fourth grade, that's when things started to stabilize. So, yeah, from that point on, I had the same friends. Yeah, you're right. From that point on, going, that, that's how it was. Yeah, it, it was difficult for me to leave the city. I remember when my, uh, my wife wanted to leave, she was like, we need to take off. You know, we need something better for the kids. I told her, what are you talking about? Because I was right there, uh, it's more park, like right in my neighborhood, right? And I'm like, man, we chilling. Like, like I, we don't need to leave. Like, we're good, right? And uh, she just let me know, like, look, because her brother's from my neighborhood. <laughs> both of her brothers are from my neighborhood. And um, so she's like, they're, you're, their dad's from the neighborhood. My, Their uncles, their uh, their grandpa, you know, their great grandfather. Like, like, it's too much. It's too much. Like, they're, they're going to get, they're going to get swallowed into this. They're going to think that, they have an obligation, right? We need to leave. And so, yeah, it, it was difficult. At first, it was very difficult. I moved to a predominantly Asian community, real quiet, real, like, chill. And, like, I missed a lot of the stuff. No elotemen. Like, you don't hear, ding, 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 ding. like, none of that stuff. It's like, oh, man. And uh, uh, But now I'm used to it. Now, now I feel like El Monte is my home, but where I live at now, that's my home, too. Yeah, yeah. see, like, Sonny and I, we moved around a lot man he 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 knows what i'm talking about just getting up and moving different cities different this different that different schools whatever it may be but i think there's something special when you grow up in one town one city whatever it may be where you can always go back even if you moved away you can always go back and say like this right here this is yeah. where it happened for me you know since a little chavalito to this age this is where it happened you know for me so whenever you go back, man, do you ever feel like, hey, man, this is, you know, th this was it for me this, right here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My my my, my Pita still lives in the neighborhood. I'll go over there all the time and check her out. And, yeah, I, I felt good. You know what I mean? Especially, like, if I'll go buy some shoes right there at the Valley Mall, Sally Shoes. Uh, sometimes the homies would see me. What's up, Cricket, man? How you been? I'm, What's up, G? And it's all love. And, and it's crazy because I love the city so much, right? So I walk back with a smile on my face and my kids are always like, what's so special about this place? I mean, you, got, you guys could never know. It's, it's years of, of just it building my character here. It's years of just the game, like, like just understanding, schooling, everything, uh, memories. Like my wife and I grew up in El Monte. So it's like everything that, that happened to me in my life goes back to El Monte. You know what I mean? So, so they'll never understand it because I moved them out when they were young. And they were raised in a different city. So they, and they have roots in that city now. That's where they grew up at. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So for them, it's like, but they're not on that gangbanging stuff. Like that's not them at all. So they don't understand like a pride in the city kind of thing. 
they they like California, they like Los Angeles County, but they don't really understand like ah what's so special about these cities. It's like you, you have no idea because and I'm glad they don't because it you know for you, it's we we kind of put ourselves and set ourselves up for failure at times when we push too hard. It's like uh, as look you know, G's and gangsters cholos. I kind of feel like we love too hard sometimes. Everywhere it's like we'll we'll kind of push the boundaries and 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 uh, we'll do things we shouldn't and. Um, you know, I'm glad they, they don't have to go through that. Yeah, yeah. That, and I think that's why, like, you got them out of there to get away from all that. You know what I mean? And uh, because, like I told you earlier, I was um, third generation from my barrio, too. And, you know, I, to have a change, to have a real change, I had to get out. You know what I mean? And to really change, I didn't want my kids to be the fourth generation. You know what I mean? I didn't want yeah. them to have to live that life because you, you don't know if you're going to survive that. You know what I mean? You don't know, yeah. you know, who's going to survive that, that generation, you know? So I decided, but I know what you mean, uh, Cholo Trucker, like I do go back to my audio sometimes and I do remember like a lot of spots, corner streets, you know, where this, that, that, this happened or what do you know what I mean? It's a lot of memories, a lot of, you know, like this is my home right here where I'm at right now, but my heart's over there too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's big part of my heart, a big part of my history. Hey, Hey, hey Sonny. Yeah. Sonny. I mean, it's not just about moving now, right, homie? I mean, you can move out and still find problems anywhere else if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. You and I, I mean, I'm sure we know that, man, moving around different places because I did. What do you got yeah. on that? No, I understand. No, he, he's completely right. I moved around a lot. It's kind of hard for me to call a certain place my home. Um, but a lot of it was in a month there. But how did your homeboys take it when you started to kick back cricket or what made you start to kick back? What made you start to change? So my my uh, wife, you know, she, my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, she, she got pregnant. And I just asked myself, do I want to put my children to the same thing that I went through? Uh, you know, my pop went to prison when I was real young. I had to, you know, basically learn a lot without him. And I, I didn't want that. I don't want my kids to have to do that. I don't, I don't want my kids to have to, to grow up without me. Um, I have a lot of homies, unfortunately, that, you know, they weren't there for, for the kids growing up. And I, I just, I didn't want that for, for them. And um, I just decided I'm going to do what it takes. You know what I mean? Little by little, I'm going to, I'm going to take the necessary steps. And um, yeah, I, I took a chance on myself. Uh, started working at Bank of America, um, moved out of the city and just started doing well a, a little by a little. And, uh, but I never did anything like, like the homies always supported it because I never did anything that was like, out of character or, or foul or anything, you know what I mean? I could I could still go back and take Cuba right now, and it's all love because I, I'm, you know, I I all I did is is uh try to set up a better life for my kids, and they understand that. And a lot of them are, are did the same thing. I go to some of my homies' pads, and I'm like, damn, you fools are doing it big, and I'm proud of them. And I think that's that's what's cool. I, with the cats that I grew up with, we all have love for each other. As long as you know, you don't step on anyone's toes. As long as you don't do anything foul out of character. We're always going to embrace you if you're trying to do better for yourself. Well, um, you let me Growing up, oh, go ahead. Love yeah, machine. Can I real quick? Um, what's the subject about? I'm, a, you know, I just got here. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Whose subject is this? We're talking about Javier. We're talking about, yeah, yeah. about him. Oh, we're just talking about him. Yeah. Much love, well, G. Much love, G. Anyways, cricket. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm real familiar with Monte, so. Monte has uh, uh, it's known to be notorious. It's it's you know what I mean it got its issues, but one thing about Monte is I've never known them to be snappers. They're always respectful to everybody they run across until it's that time not to be respectful. Yeah. Um, how do how do you, like your enemies feel towards you that you run across? And I know you run across them because Monte is small. So um, how do how do how do they interact with you now that you're uh, staying out of trouble. The, the, they hardly say uh, uh, it's all love. Like, uh, you know, people hit me up. Uh, I have Beaver from Northside Bowling. He's always in my uh, my show. You know what I mean? Much love to Beaver. Uh, Gabby from Monte Hayes. So always in the chat, always showing his love. Homies from Bassett. I have them hit up on the wall because they see, like, I put out a, a positive vibe. I tell people, I'm all about, I'm all about growth and positivity, right? So most people, most people will come at me respectfully because I come at them respectfully. And that's the way I do it. I, I I don't disrespect anyone. I don't try to say, oh, my enemies ain't this or ain't that. Nah, Charlotte, because I know for a fact 
every gangster is based on the individual, right? Like gangbang is based on individuals collectively. So I know writers from everywhere. You know what I mean? So I, I don't I don't badmouth anyone or anything like that. So everybody's been cool with it. Like everybody's been real cool with me. Even when I was in Hawaii, I went up north. In Nellis, yeah, we were gangbanging, but I went up north with uh Stomper from Northside Bowling. And then when I came down south, back down south to YTS, I was in YTS. Uh, Danger from Eastside Bowling had just came back from the joint. So, you know, he's on he's on something else. So he wasn't on that gangbanging either. So for a while, it was, it was me and two fools from Bowling, Eastside, Northside, and we're all enemigas. And none of us tripped because we were on we were on different shit. Like some of us were up north already. Uh, other homies had came from the joint. So for me, I, I just like, I, I don't even trip. I, I understand the animosity, the anger that people, the youngsters have, but I know that everybody has that. You're mainly mad at yourself is what it is. You're angry at your situation. You're angry at, at your circumstances and you just uh, take it out on other people. So I, I understand that, but I've been fortunate enough where people see me as an older cat and they don't really sweat me like that because it's all respect, it's all love. Do you still have... Uh carry on a massive to certain, like, I don't want to say certain neighborhood, but, you know, of all the people you don't get along with, there's going to be that one person maybe that you like, man, if I catch him in a dark alley, I'm going to have my way with him. The last person I had animosity towards like that was a fucking uh, cop. Uh, it was a, a cop in Central. I said, if I ever see that motherfucker, I'm going to smoke his ass. And uh, <laughs> I got I got lucky that I grew out of that. A few years ago, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything wrong. You know what I mean? But, but like, that's, that's the last person I had animosity towards that when it came to other, and the only reason for that is because he abused his power. Like he, he was a, he was a, a real punk, but uh, for other homies, like, like I said, I, I know what they're going through and I did the same thing. There's no way I can forgive myself and not forgive them. And for me, the hardest part of my growth was forgiving myself for all the messed up scandalous stuff I did. So if I can forgive myself, I definitely have to forgive them. Cause I understand why they did it. I did a lot of the same things. I uh, see pride in the issue, huh? I see pride is not an issue. No, no. You can you put have... your pride to the side because that's what a lot of people struggle with is pride. It seems like you could just push it to the side, and that's well, good. Me, that's, I, that's I, I, good. I, have, I have pride in other things now. You know what I mean? So, so I still have pride, but they're just I just direct my pride elsewhere. And for me, my pride now. It's for my family, for my people, trying to come up and, and uh, trying to get people to grow and, and be positive. That, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to push now. So, yeah, uh, I, I still, like I said, I got love. And if you're from the SGV, I got love for you. Even if you're not from the SGV, I got love for you. But, like, I, I'm always going to have love for my boys. Yeah, my hometown. So, but, yeah, I'm not, I'm not tripping on, on stuff like that. Now, I don't have animosity towards, towards anyone like that because I understand they did exactly what I did. And, and, and you know what that is cricket honestly i call that being a true man you know what i mean to be able to say you know what man i i forgive those that trespass against me and i just hope they forgive me and yeah and, and you grow you grow mentally and you grow and, and and just in everything that you do you grow and you're able to say you know what i mean like because man pride pride will, will get you killed man and and there's you have to know when to like I mean, we're all proudful. We're all proudful people. We're all proudful rasa, you know what I mean? And uh, But sometimes you just got to lay that down for a minute and think about what your fight's going to be because if things go sideways and go wrong, like even if you if you throw down, you throw a hit, a hit of auto and he died just from one hit, right? Because it's happened. It's happened. Yeah. What happens to your wife? What happens to your kids? What happens to everything? They lose everything, dog, because of one moment of a relapse of, having that mentality, ah, I'm gonna, you know, and then they lose the pad, the cars, you know, they lose you, you know what I mean? And and yeah. everything that they've ever known is gone because of some clown or because of a comment or a look or a stare, you know? And so it takes a real man to be able to realize and and I, and I, I, have, I applaud you for that. I applaud I you for that. that. Thanks, you know what, everybody on this screen, I applaud all you Vatos because all of us changed. All of us realized that, hey, it's time to change. It's time to, to grow up and it's time to, you know, get our kids out of this mess and stuff like that. So all of us here, man, that's why we're all here right now because, um, except for love machine. Oh, oh. oh that's your kid. So you should have did a better job. Right <laughs> but yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. Big time. So what do you got going on right now? Tell me about that whole weight loss thing. Yeah. So, uh, um, 
I originally went on a TV show. I did a weight loss thing. It was called a revenge body with Khloe Kardashian. I lost 56 pounds on there. I lost about 80 pounds altogether. And then COVID hit and the gyms were closed. My routine messed up. I gained a lot of the weight back, but now I'm back on it. I'm back on it. The gyms are open. I'm uh, working out every day and I'm just trying to get back to where I was uh, a year ago. Really? Oh man, that's, that's great. That's great. You, you know what, man? I, I made a video on Total Truck called Shape Up, homeboy, talking mm. about, like, man, I just looked around and just everybody is just overweight. Everybody is just out of shape. Well, I mean, everybody. Hey, hey, I take offense to that. <laughs> that, that, that. That's exactly who I was looking at, man. I know. But, I know. but, um, but no, you know what? Uh, what was your heaviest uh, cricket that you were on up here? Uh, probably about three something, maybe three ten. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so about three ten, and then I dropped down to about two nineteen. Um, yeah, and and, yeah, and, and you know, and you know what, man? It, it's it's crazy because you know we never talk about this, man, in 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 our communities. We never talk about you know health and staying in shape and stuff like that, man. So, hey, I applaud you, homie, for for doing what you're doing, and I've seen a video or two of yours where, where you're, you know, you had, you walk by the train tracks, um, you work out like in the backyard or something like that as well. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. Because nobody ever brings this up. You know, it's always like a, a funny joke or whatever and stuff like that. But now, nah, man, this, this stuff brings up health issues, man. At very young ages, you got guys in their forties, thirties. Now we're seeing it in the twenties, dog, people with diabetes. And it's like, dang, man, you know, Shouldn't we be addressing this? So I applaud you, dog, for what you're doing. Huh? But you know what, Trollo Trucker, to be honest, dog, the only reason you don't hear about it is because you're skinny. Five okay. people like me hear about it every day. Hey, but but <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest right here. We're all brown, right? In, in, our culture, in, in our culture, our family, our grandmas, our tias, they expect you to be chubby or gordito because you're healthy. You know what I mean? They want you to knock out eight tacos where you're eating those tacos and the, and the liquid's coming down and it's all with manteca <laughs> from the shell and all that. And you're eating, like, eat more, mijo, eat more. You know, and then when you come in, you're wobbling like that sideways. They, oh, he looks healthy, he looks good. You know, but then as soon as you lose weight, you get on like, like what well, Javier, you get on a, a weight loss and you lose weight and you walk in, they're like, no, nah, man, that's, that, that, that's sick. I'm malo. Yeah, man, that's in those drogas. He, and all that, and the grandma says, I don't even hear his heartbeat from here no more either. You know, <laughs> struggling. And it's real. It's honestly, it's real. So um, I know, like, I was like, you, Javier, I, I weighed 315. And uh, I got all the way down to, to 214. To two, I lost 90, 99 pounds in a year. And it was all through eating healthy, just eating healthy. That's all it was. But when I lost the weight, I still felt like I was fat. But my, my family was like, oh, he's sick. What's wrong with them? You know, they, they thought everything in the world, but it wasn't. It's just I wanted to be healthier. I wanted to, you know, live longer life and, and all that, you yeah. know. But I um, did the same thing, Joe. I was at 308 and I dropped down to like close to 220. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Yeah, you did. I, and I dropped that within like four, five, maybe six months. But I dropped it too quick. I stopped drinking the soda, all that stuff. And I started slimming down. They're like, are you sick? You're right. You don't look right like that. They're like eat some more. I mean, I don't want to get like that fat. No, I, I gain weight back. And like Sonny, you know, Sonny tattoos, the chicks that he has, they look fat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Sonny got some fat tattoo chicks. But yeah, <laughs> we gotta keep it up. We gotta we gotta stay healthy. Yeah, I hey, hey, hey. We all have that COVID weight right now. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh. hey, so love machine, stop drinking the sodas, huh? Hey Joe, why don't you take a sip of your of your soda, Holmes? But uh, oh, hey, I, hey, right now, right now, I'm still drinking. I, 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 I'm slipping still, but I gotta get back on that program where I stopped drinking sodas because that's like off the back. I lose like almost thirty pounds when I stopped drinking soda the first time. But right now, the baby weight. Right now, with my baby, I always gain weight when I have a baby, and right now, I'm just riding it out to like uh, stop drinking soda and get back on my program. But well, I don't think I'm ready yet. So, uh, Javier, Javier, so what, what's like your number one thing with the weight loss? How did you do it? What was your, your top thing that you could say, yeah, you know, it was mainly this. I think, uh, for me, 
I get like I get really obsessive with shit and stuff, right? So I get real like I I worked out like crazy. So I was burning so many calories every day. I'd wake up about five in the morning. I uh, go to the gym, hit the stairs, right? So I'd hit the stairs for a little bit. Then I would go home, shower up, take the kids to school, and then I'd walk to work. Uh, at, at lunchtime, I'd walk about 45 minutes. Um, and then I'd run back home. And then from the home, I'd get back to the pad, I'd drive over to Santa Monica. And uh, we uh, we go to a gym over there called uh, Gloveworks, which is uh, basically like uh, boxing style uh, workouts, right? Like uh, um, circuit workouts, but boxing, boxing based circuit workouts. So I would do that about five weeks, five days a week. On Saturdays, I would run about five miles like that was like a, a chill day. And then Sunday, I, I wouldn't do anything. I would just rest. So I was burning so many calories and I was just like obsessive with it. And that's what I do. Like I get like really, really like obsessed with things. And I'm like, let's go, let's go. If I ain't moving, I ain't doing it, right? Let's go. And and uh, so for me, it was just, that's just the way I operate. And uh, my kids and my wife sometimes are like, whoa, we get kind of pushy. That's why I have to do it alone. Because I'm like, come on, dog, we can do this. Come on, we can do this. We can do this. And they're like, chill out, man, chill out. So I'm like, all right, I get it. So I, a lot of times I have to do things on my own because I do get like really obsessive with stuff. Yeah. So it's that, and a lot of it was eating too. Uh, like you said in the beginning, um, is it rice, beans, tortillas? For me, it was none of that. And if there were beans, there were black beans. If there was rice, it was brown rice, right? So yeah. it's like you, you had to just change up. I had to change up my eating habits. But what messed me up is because I was burning so many calories, I was able to uh, get a cheap meal here and there. And then when COVID hit, that cheat meal here and there came just all the time. And then the exercise was less and less frequent until I was like, oh, man, I got to do something again. Like, I'm, I'm huge, but uh, I'm ready to do it. I've been doing it. Maybe about, I lost about 10 pounds so far. Last month, I lost 10 pounds. And I'm going to try to lose another 20 this month. Orale, orale. And, and, and you know what? To anybody and everybody that's watching, I, hey, hey, Javier, I'm glad you said what you just said right there, okay? Because check this out, man. There are so many different type of methods and books that are still being sold today that have been sold for many years on how to lose weight. It's still back to the simple thing, diet and exercise. Yeah. That's it. None of this, all this, you know, weird old, I mean, people are writing books and stuff. I mean, I, I, I can understand somebody giving you tips and stuff like that, but diet and exercise, those are the things, man. And I get it. It's it's a little bit tough and life gets in the way um, and things like that. But if you make it part of your daily routine, man, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, man. And uh, Love Machine, I'm looking at you now, Holmes. Hey, Raiden, uh, where can I get a hat like that? Hey, I'm going to say, no, if you got it, it's certain status to get that hat, dog. You're not there yet. Um, but I be like, Raiden, like to eat healthy, it costs more money to eat healthy. Oh, yeah. Like they, they yeah. have to set up where, where it costs more to, to try to do better for yourself. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it, it could, but if you do it, there's certain ways to do it. My, my old lady knows how to, how to really mess with it. You know, you just got to get black beans, brown rice, and then look for, for good quality chicken and stuff. And, and, and you're good. But it's, it's taste buds too, though. People yeah. are like, oh, I want this and I want that. And it's like, nah, you have to kind of change everything. You have to change your habits and, and you have to add greens. You have to add, um, you have to add water, water for everything, right? Like that's all I drink right now is, is water. Like it's just, a. Uh, and what sucks for me though is a, uh, me too. Like I love, I love soda. I love hamburgers. I love burritos. I love tortas, but I have to cut all that out. I have to cut all that out. And, um, when I get to a point where I could eat it again, I'm, I can't just let that consume me. It's like a, I kind of look at the look at it as a food addiction, right? You if you if you take one bite, that could be that could be the the downward spiral for you. So I just try to you know stay focused, stay motivated, and remember that I have I have a special needs daughter, so remember that I have to be there for her in 20, 30 years from now because she can't take care of herself. So if I'm not there, then I'm I'm letting her down. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You're an amazing father, man. You know what I mean? You put huh? your family ahead of yourself. And, and all that is is it's amazing, man. I appreciate that. You know, you have that mentality. That's good. But, oh. Hey, hey, cricket, do you do a portion control? I'm not talking to you, Sonny. Cricket, do you do you do portion controls? Do you do like 
Like, I did portion control for a minute. When I lost all that weight, I'll split my breakfast in half. And then I eat like five, six times a day. But I, I lost weight with that, too. Well, for me, I was fortunate enough to, uh, uh, when I was on that show, I had a, uh, he's still my boy to this day. Uh, so he's a celebrity trainer, Leon. Uh, he trained uh, Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Love Hewitt, John Goodman, um, a lot a lot of different people. And he just basically told me, like, what you have to do is you have to find something that you can be consistent at. Find something that's gonna you're going to be able to do for the rest of your life, right? It has to be a lifestyle change. So I, I understand how you can lose weight from portion control, but you just have to be something, it has to be something that you're going to be able to do going forward. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that, that's what, uh, that's the knowledge he gave me. And a lot of people try to, you know, they'll, they'll tell me things like, you have to do this, you have to do that. Try this, try that. And I, I do uh, uh, take those into consideration, but I lost a lot of weight the first time listening to my, my boy, Leon. You know what I mean? Like he knows what he's doing and, and I'm going to, that, that's what worked for me the first time. And I'm going to continue with that. Mm -hmm. I know the best way to lose weight, go to jail. <laughs> I was at 325, went to prison, came out of a wall. I went all the way down to 185 from 325. And then I went back up to 240 when I paroled. And that was like yeah. the perfect way for me. Well, then I'm going to stash something in your ride. Uh, Sonny, you, you can catch a case on me, but it's all right. It's for, it's for your own good. Hey, times. Javier. Times. <laughs> hey, hey. hey. Hey Javier, so uh, yeah. what's up? What's up with your show, homie? I mean, you know, you're doing some things, man. What's coming up on Incredible Javier? And is that a second wall I see behind you that you got? Yeah, yeah, I have two more. So I, I had the one over there, but it was all the way over there. We didn't do anything. So yeah, I added another wall. I blocked off a window, threw a wall up, uh, because I, I have uh, four mics now, so we're gonna bring out more guests. So uh, I believe Sunny and Love Machine are coming down. Uh, fuck, I forgot what day. I got it written down. But yeah, so we, we they wanted to bring another guest, but have another guest, and and uh, so I got three. I could have three guests now, so I had to make the wall bigger. You know what I mean? Because it's like we we're all crowded in a little little area right there. So I had to move out, uh, not move out, but like move to the side, and yeah, extend it a little bit. So yeah, we got a new wall, and uh, we got a lot of free uh, free real estate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can I hit up with a spray can? Yeah, that blank spot right there, dog. Hey, uh, the there, there's real estate right there, dog. Yeah, yeah. Can I hit up with a spray can? Hey, Cricket. No, that'll take up too much room, G, but I got new markers. Cricket. They're not like the old ones, uh, uh, Sonny. Yeah. What do you Sonny got planned Cricket. next for your show? So I have uh, me and G. Lou are going to do a review on Thursday of a Tax Collector. So I'm watching that tonight so I can uh, we can do that. I have my boy, uh, George. He's my neighborhood. He works for NASA. Uh, he's coming on Thursday. No, on Friday. Um Saturday, I got somebody. I, I don't. I don't remember. But you know, I just I'm just keeping it consistent. Um, just got uh, got the guests coming in. I have uh, just you know they're trying different things. You know what I mean? So I try different things. I, I what I, the thing that I love doing is interacting. You know, just like I, I know a lot of you guys do the same thing. Are you all we're all, always going live and just clowning? And uh, I, I like today I did a, an episode on hood oldies, right? Because I thought I had like you know people are like oh that's the neighborhood that's the hood song right there. So I just talking to like, hey, what, what, what are what are different hood songs out there? Like, you know, 18th Street has 18 with a bullet. Um, you know, we have uh, Wildflower, Memories of the Monte. Uh, a lot of homies have uh, the town I live in. So don't really have to start off with stuff like that, right? And then it'll just turn into just, we're just talking about oldies. And we're just talking about, yeah, I like the Tempris. I like the stylistic, like, like Joe Batan. I like Rafi Bagan, you know what I mean? And, and, and so that I like to just start off with the topic but I'm not one of those guys. It's kind of like, hey, we're stuck on this topic. Like, nah, like we're gonna we're gonna chop it up. You know what I mean? So that's what we do. Right? So we did that today, and I'm just gonna continue to do stuff like that. Get get the guest on and tell stories. Yeah. Hey, well, look, man. I mean, damn. If you're gonna have both of these bottles on at the same time, good luck, Holmes. The machine <laughs> playing together, Holmes. Hey, good luck, homie. All right, I'll be praying for you, cricket. Yeah. Cricket, just have your water hose. If they get stuck, homies, you're going to have to put water on them. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, okay, man, as we're wrapping it up, uh, you want to say anything, Cricket? I just want to uh, thank all you guys uh, for the, the hospitality. Appreciate it. Much love to LA Times. Much love to the Street St. Loyal. Much love to Cholo, Truck, uh, Cholo Trucker. And uh, appreciate you guys having me on. You know why you're on here, right, Cricket? Why is that? Because you're a positive channel. That's the only one that hits this channel. I appreciate hey, that, Jim. Hey, 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 last question for you, Cricket. 
if yeah. you had to, if you had to, you can only pick one egg. It has to be for the rest. Cake or pie? Pie. I like pie. I, I like uh like pumpkin pie, uh apple. I like pies better. Cakes are oh, just or menudo. We're done here. Okay, you guys are probably uh, I don't know. I'm probably gonna get thrown off right now. I don't like soup. Nah. So get out. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. not, even, uh, not even uh Carlo de Res. I don't like any soup, dog. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, hey, man. I just, get him out of here, dog. <laughs> there, there, there's something about just hot, hot water. I, I don't know. I just can't. I can't mess with oh, it. Oh man, some ambondi hey. gas, man. Oh. I can't. No, my right. wife Thank loves you. it. I can't. I can't do it. Cricket sunny or cholo trucker? Oh, For what? On. President? Come on. No. We're like twins, or how are you gonna choose twins, dog? We're different, like. <laughs> Man, hey, I, th I, th hey, 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 I think this episode's done, dog. I think yeah. done. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to, you know, um, one last thing I want to say that um, when you're going on a weight loss, uh, there's no miracle weight loss programs or drugs or stuff out there that's gonna, um, yeah, you can lose weight like for the short term, but once you stop doing that, you know, they have all these uh, what Beverly Hills diet and all this stuff, you know, what I mean, um you wind up gaining back that weight plus some with any of the yeah. any kind of stuff like that it's all short term but for the long term um just like with cholo trucker and uh the amazing incredible javier said that you know it takes exercise and it takes discipline you know eating the right things and uh to really lose weight and keep it off and have a, a healthier lifestyle um that those are the the main things right there and, you know, we just appreciate, you know, I appreciate Sunny Boy for coming today. Um, Total Trucker, Love Machine, and the incredible, amazing, talented. And spectacular. Firing, spectacular. Immaculate. Super, yeah, super sexy. Um, uh, Mr. Royalness. Yeah, you know, we appreciate you. you. know, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I do appreciate you coming on today, dog. And you're an inspiration for a lot of people out there now, as far as, like, uh, changing your life you know, and, uh, and doing the right thing as a man and being able to, to lose the weight, you know what I mean? And just everything, man, your whole, everything that you do in life, man, you're, you're an inspiration to, to many dog, to many. I and, uh, we're, we're, we pushing your show and, and, uh, we, we watching your show. And, uh, when you get these two bottles on there, Spencer, dog, you know what I mean? Just make sure you put paper on your <laughs> hey, seats. We're going to tear it up, dog. <laughs> yeah, put, put paper on your seats and all that stuff. You know what I mean? You're going to have to have seat belts on those chairs. Yeah, and all that. <laughs> dog. So, hey, we appreciate you big time. Everybody, follow and uh, subscribe to uh, Cricket's channel. I mean, it's amazing. It's positive. And it's everything you want to know because it's it's everything that we all live through, everything that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. It's positivity. It's about ODs, like he said. It's about, you know, everything. Streets ain't loyal. Give them a subscribe. Give them a follow. Give them a shout-out. Uh, total trucker, it's all for solid time. Get ready. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing I was gonna say. Cricket, you say you box, and man, I don't know, does it sound like a uh, undercard right there with uh, cricket? <laughs> huh? You, you want to box uh, Love Machine, knock him out, dog? <laughs> I'm not a fighter, I fight no more. <laughs> Hey, hey, went bad. Hey, hey, cricket, you qualify because you got glasses, dog. So that, that's an automatic yeah. in on the on the undercard, Holmes. But uh, <laughs> hey, just brought it up, Holmes. I don't know. Hey, let's get the gossip going. But we appreciate you guys. Give us a like, a subscribe. Um, all their uh channels are gonna be down below. You can click on there and follow them. Like I said, enjoy everybody's content. We appreciate you guys, we love you guys. God bless you all, and we'll be seeing you soon. Okay, gracias.